All right, Judges, the sixth chapter of the book of Judges. We'll start at the first verse. It says, Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> that's a, that's a, a funny way to start. But that's, that's the case in most, most situations is we find ourselves in hardships and, and hard times is because we've broken a law. And everything that you've ever dealt with is because of a law you've broken. Uh, if you're having some health issues because you broke a law concerning eating. Uh, a lot of times we face situations and problems in life and we don't realize that we've created our own problem because of the things we've done in violation to, to different laws. And so it says the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And so the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Midianites or in the hands of the enemy. It seems like the Lord would be cruel, but the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Midian for seven years. Listen at this. The hand of the Midian prevailed against Israel because of the Midianites. The children of Israel made for themselves dens and caves and strongholds which were in the mountains. So it was that whenever Israel had sown, Midians came, would, they would come up, and the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them, and then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth. So every time they went out to sow seeds so they could produce a harvest so that they could eat, the enemy came and crushed them and took over and ransacked their harvest and so they couldn't eat. They couldn't even live in their houses. They went and moved in caves. So they were going through some hardships because of their own disobedience or their own evil. And they were reaping on what they had sown. Midianites would come up and destroy all of their produce and leave them no substance. So actually, they put them in a situation where people were dying. They were starving because they could not reap any of the harvest. They went out and sowed in the night. They went out and planted seed. But they could not reap the harvest because the enemy kept coming in and destroying their crop. And so I want to start that verse where it says, And it came to pass on verse 7, when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, they realized they had got into a violation, and so they began to cry out for mercy. They cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, and the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them, Thus said the Lord God of Israel. I brought you out from Egypt, brought you out of the house of bondage. I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptian and out of the hand of them who oppress you and drove them out before you, and then I gave you their land. Then tell me God didn't do something mighty. He took them out of Egypt, took them out of the world, took them out of the oppression, turned around and took the land of the oppressor and gave it to them. And this is what the Lord said. Also, I, and this is what I said. I am the Lord your God. Do not, do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But you have not obeyed my voice. Oh, my God. We're so, we're so disobedient. God gives you something, tells you, look, just enjoy the land. I've taken it from them. I've given it to you. Just keep my word. Don't get in violation. And they did exactly that. They got outside of the will of God for their lives. And so the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Oprah, belonged to Joaz, the Abizarite. And while his son Gideon thrust wheat in the wine press in order to hide from the Midianites, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and he said to him, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Now that's what I want to talk to you about. Here Gideon is being oppressed for seven years. Their whole family is being affected by this. People are starving and dying because they can't produce any food. Because every time they sow seed, the Midianites come and destroy their harvest and take whatever they're planting. They've moved out of their houses. They've moved into caves because they're afraid. Because of the sin, they can't fight their enemies. They are no match for the enemy because they're in violation to God's word. Just like us, we're no match for the enemy when we're in violation to the word of God. But when we're living in obedience to God's word, there's no, no weapon formed against us that can prosper. Any tongue that rises against us in judgment, 
He'll condemn. See, God will fight your battles when you're in your right place. But when you get out of place, God will allow the enemy to take over and, and take advantage of you. And so he's telling Gideon, he says, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of war. Now, at that time, Gideon didn't see himself as no mighty man of war. This is what Gideon said. He said, oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why? <laughs> I like that. And listen, listen to this. A lot of times we're looking at the situation. Gideon was doing an assessment based on where they were. They had been oppressed for seven years. Now, some of y'all have been oppressed for 17 years. And you still hadn't gotten to the point where you understand what potential really is. See, potential is the ability to be able to do something uh, a whole lot better than you can even imagine. So listen, Gideon said, why? He's asking him, why, if, if, if I'm all that you say I am, why am I going through this? Potential is the capacity to become something in the future. Potential is something you hadn't even tapped into yet. And so everybody is full of potential. All of us have potential because God has put seeds of greatness in all of us. But after seven years of oppression, you can't see your potential because you're too busy looking at your oppression. You know, this is the thing. If you take the oppression, the hardships that you've been through, and if you mix them with the potential God gave you and mix it with faith, there's no limit to what you can do in the things of the spirit. See, God wants you to learn how to mix your hardship with potential, with faith, and guess what happens? Success is automatic. You know why? Because people listen to experience. It's not what we go through, it's how we respond. You could go through a lot of dark times, but if you allow the dark times to press you down, instead of allowing the dark times to lift you up, See, it could be a stepping stone or it could push you down. You got to allow what you go through to become an experience. Because once it's an experience, you mix it with your potential and that's what gives you your success. Because when you're talking about something you've been through, see, I can't hear what you're saying. I'm too busy watching what you're doing. But when you're talking about something you've been through, when you walk through that dark time, and came out on the other side, then you got something to talk about. That's why they say when E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens because he's successful. But he didn't become successful overnight. He went through some times of learning, some times of failure, some, some times of defeat. Sometimes we got to go through some dark times so that we can get to the light. But we got to press our way through those dark times. We can allow what we've been through to define who we are. And we can't allow what we've been through to, to determine what our future looks like. Now, I want to tell you, your future is not inside of you. Your future, I mean, your future is not around you. Your future is not in front of you. Your future is in you. And so I was thinking today about a rosebud. When I looked at the bud, it was just a bud. But I want you to know something. In that bud, is a beautiful rose. So that bud has the potential of producing a beautiful rose. And so everything God wanted a thing to be, he put it in the thing. Whatever God wanted you to be, he has already put it in you. The problem with us is we don't know what's in us. Because we too busy spending time with other people who tell us who we are. Listen. You know, when God says he told man to work, that word work, it means to manifest what I deposited in your life. In other words, show me what I put in you. See, your potential is unlimited. What you could do in life is determined based on what you see yourself as. See, Gideon didn't see anything. Gideon, first question was, okay, if you say I'm a mighty man of valor, then why? Why what? Why am I dealing with this? Why am I still oppressed? Why am I hiding when I should be out in the forefront?
But see, Gideon had a problem that a lot of us have. He had what they call a low self-esteem. A low self-esteem is a low estimation of who you are. You've allowed other people to dictate and tell you who you are. You've allowed circumstances and situations to tell you who you are. When, when Gideon asked why, he was calculating seven years of hell. And he was saying, how could I be such a great leader when I've been defeated for seven years? Okay. Don't let the seven years of defeat stop you from your victory. I'm telling you that the potential God has deposited in your life is greater than any defeat you ever face. But you got to believe that. So listen at this. Gideon said, why then has this happened to us? And where are his miracles, which our father told us about? Saying, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Now, you know what's amazing to me is Gideon was hiding in a hole. And Gideon judged himself based on the hole he was hiding in. That's some of y'all. Y'all judging yourself based on the hole you hiding in. God is judging you based on the ability he gave you to get out the hole. I'm going to say that again. Some of us are judging ourselves based on the hole we're hiding in. God is judging you based on the ability he gave you to get out the hole. Now, you're going to have to get out the hole. Just like Moses had to pick up the stick, you're going to have to get out the hole. The hole was there just for a time. But there was a refining and a defining that was taking place while you were in that dog spot. See, the dog spot was to perfect you so when you come to the light, you perfected already. God is already doing something in your life. So when he brings you to the forefront, your abilities and everything God deposited is ready to be delivered to your generation. Listen, you have great potential. God has put great seeds or seeds of greatness in your life. Don't let anybody tell you what you can and cannot do. Because when God made a deposit, he made one in everybody. One thing about God is he's not going to give one something and not give the other. Everybody is gifted in their area. And you need to discover what area you're gifted in. And then take your gift and serve it to the world. So Gideon, he tells him, he said, listen. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours. You shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites, have I not sent you? So he said to him, oh my Lord, this is Gideon, how can I save Israel? That's what I hear with people. How can I do anything great? How can I ever make history? How can I become the entertainer that I desire? Listen, if you're passionate about it, God gave you the passion. He gave you the potential. All you need to do now is use the components that he gave you to become everything he said you could be. See, we missing some of the components. I got passion. I got potential. I need prayer. I need praise. I need power. I need people. See, you need people to help you to deliver your baby. Sometimes we get so heady and high-minded, we don't think we need anybody. Mm. Yeah, you're going to need some people. You're going to need them when you're successful. You're going to need them before you get there. You're going to need them more when you become successful. Because you have so many other people pulling on you. See, because if you're not careful, what happens is when we become successful, we become drunk on our own notoriety. Right. <laughs> oh, Lord, but when you're drunk on your own notoriety... You listen, you have a, a, a million dollars, but you be broke because your, your, your accountant's spending all your money. Because you so drunk on the fame and the glory, you don't even understand how it works. Listen to this. People think about glory, right? The glory of the bud is the rose. So, so, so the, the rose bud 
is not at its full potential until it buds and the rose comes out. But the whole time the bud was closed, the rose was in there. What am I telling you? I'm telling you that whatever God desired for you to be is already in there. It's inside. You just need to spend enough time with yourself to discover what it is that God has put in you. Nobody could limit what you came to do but you. You are your worst enemy. See, Gideon began to talk about his family. And God began to tell him how great he was and what he could accomplish. And this is the first thing Gideon said in verse 15. He said, he said to him, oh, my Lord, indeed, my family is the weakest in Manasseh. My family is the weakest in Manasseh. And I'm the weakest link in the family. And that's how... I mean, that's how he's looking at it. I'm the weakest link in the family. My family is the weakest link in Manasseh, and I'm the weakest link in my family. And you telling me I'm going to be able to do all that you said? I, see, I can't see it. He, he couldn't see it. And so if you can't see it before you see it, you'll never see it. You got to see the potential that God has deposited in your life when everything says it can't happen. Because the only thing that can limit you is you. Gideon said, Lord have mercy. My family is the weakest in Manasseh. And I'm the least in my family's house. Shameful. He felt shameful. Based on the family he came out of. Based on their conditions. He was being pressed down by the circumstances. But don't you know that circumstances are subject to change? All you have to do is see it before you see it. You, you got to take your faith and mix it with your potential and mix it with your experience. And that combination is success all by itself. Because nobody could talk about what you've been through, but you. So when I write about the things I've been through in life, you can't steal this, homie. <laughs> you can't feel this because you can't steal this. You got to go through this. Right, yeah, yeah. You, you got to be able to go through this to be able to talk about it because I've been about it. Yeah. I've been through it. And my experience gives me what I need to succeed. So I'm telling you, everything you need is already in you. Remember, the bud has the potential of producing a rose. Where was the rose? It was in the bud. Just like the seed has the potential of becoming a tree. When I take a little seed and put it on the table, you can't see no tree in that. But the, the potential of the seed is in the seed. Now, the seed is going to need three things to become a tree. And if you listen to these three things and you work this into your life, there's no limit to what you can become. Whatever God has put in your heart that you want to be, this is the secret to it. The seed needs three things. It needs the right environment. That means if you plant a seed in the right environment, it's going to produce the tree you want it to be. It has to have the right environment. It has to have the right nutrition. That means the right water, the right food. What about if I take some contaminated water and pour it on my seed? What I'm going to do is I'm going to contaminate the fruit that my seed is going to produce. Why am I telling you that? Because it's important you get in the right environment, that you get the right nutrition, that you be careful that who you allow to pour into your life. Some people are going to pour poison, mm -hmm. contaminated water. 
that's going to contaminate your fruit. And so when the people come, because they heard that your tree has produced fruit, when they taste the fruit, they're going to say it's contaminated. Mm. And then, you know what's going to happen is they're going to put bad mouth on your product. Mm. And you're not going to be able to go and shop it nowhere because of the contamination. It's important that you get in the right environment, that you get the right nutrition and time. That's the only three components you need to be successful. Hmm. Now, in the seed is a tree. On that tree are some apples. In those apples are seeds. In those seeds are trees. Hmm. On those trees are apples. In those apples are seeds. In those seeds are trees. On those trees are apples. In those apples are seeds. Everything God wanted you to be, he put it in you. All you got to do is recognize that it's already there. You know the word glory in the Greek or in the Hebrew is kabod. You know what it means? It means the full essence of a thing. So when we talk about God filling the earth with his glory, he's talking about filling the earth with his nature. You go back in Genesis, it says that Adam and Eve was naked, but they did not know it. Why they didn't know they were naked? They were covered with his glory. They were covered with the very presence and the essence of who he is. And when they broke through the law of God, the Bible says that Light left and darkness came. And so the glory of God was smothered by the sin of man. My Jesus came back and he said, I came back to manifest God's glory again. So that's why when we accept Christ, it's called the hope of glory. Because God wants us to manifest his glory, his nature, his culture all over again. See, religion gives you a system, but the kingdom gives you a culture. See, we always talk about the Bible says that we should obey God and we should forgive. Let me tell you something. The Bible talks about forgiveness, but we ought to not forgive because the Bible says it. We ought to forgive because it's our nature. We ought to give because it's our nature. We ought to love people because it's our nature, not because we're commanded to do so. God came to bring back the culture of heaven. Even Jesus said, let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, let whatever happens in heaven happen on earth. We're God's children. And there's no limit to what we can accomplish. Whether it be athletics, whether it be music, whatever it is, I don't care what it is. Your potential is there. All you got to do is tap into it. Now, nothing comes without hard work. You're going to have to eat, sleep, and drink. Whatever it is you believe God is doing in your life. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you this. If you have the work ethics, if you have the discipline, you're going to be successful. Because your, your vision determines your discipline. Mm -hmm. If you got a vision to be great in music, then it's going to determine your discipline. It, it's going to dictate who you hang out with. It's going to dictate what kind of books you read, what kind of documentaries you watch. It's going to dictate everything. Because if I'm going east and you're going west and you're asking me to take a ride with you, you're taking me further away from where I ought to be going. So we ain't going the same direction. And I definitely can't let you take me off course. 
Because whatever you believe God is saying about you and what you ought to be, it was predetermined. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? Pre is before, determined is end. So before you even started, God finished what you came to start. And the reason why God let you start it, because it was finished before you started. So what God did is he backed up, he finished it, then he backed up and let you start. So guess what? You successful already. What you need to do is walk out God's purpose for your life. If God already finished your life, then he allowed you to back up and start, then it's already finished. As long as I stay on course. See, our problem is we want to go off course. <laughs> you know, I know that the best way to get to the Marriott is straight down Claiborne on the Canal Street. But, you know, for some strange reason, I won't cut through the French Quarter. <laughs> you know, stop disobeying your heads. <laughs> and hinder my process. All I'm saying to you, listen, everything you need, he's already deposited in your life. You know, this is amazing, but sometimes we don't recognize when God sends certain people to push you into your destiny. Sometimes they come in a disguise, like Judas, when he showed up to push Jesus in his destiny. See, Judas came and sold Jesus out. But Jesus understood that what Judas did was going to propel him into his destiny. Most of us would have got distorted with that idea. When somebody threw a monkey wrench in the game, we want vengeance. And we don't even understand that the Lord used the dude to throw the monkey wrench to push you in the direction you needed to go in. But we ain't smart enough to see that far ahead. You, you got to have foresight to be able to see that. You, you got to be able to see a thing before you see it. Mm -hmm. You got to recognize that some people have been sent to stop you from going where you're headed. And so if you understand what a sacrificial lamb is, a sacrificial lamb was something that the enemy sent at you to stop you from being on course. It's to take you off course. Because if he takes you off course, he could slow up your process. Mm -hmm. So pay attention. Sometimes God knows how to throw a detour in the road. And we think, man, man, I done ran into a roadblock. I got to go all the way around. Not knowing that's God's plan for your life because I got some plans for you. And so I threw the roadblock. So I could send you a different direction because when you go that direction, you're going to meet somebody you need to meet who's going to take you to the next level. Mm -hmm. But I'm so bothered by being able to have to go around to when I meet the guy, I'm frustrated. <laughs> so I ain't even trying to hear him. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that God set it up so that I could meet Diddy so Diddy could take me to the next level. But by the time I meet Debbie, I'm so frustrated because I had to go all the way around. I don't give Debbie the time of the day. Mm. And, and God said, you missed out on the opportunity. Because it's not what you go through, it's how you respond. Mm. If you'd have kept a positive attitude, even though you had to go all the way around, you would have saw that Diddy had been sent by God to push you into your position. Mm. Well, we miss out a lot of times. Let me tell you, I, I was a singer. And I, I mean, I was good. I had Michael Jackson, but I was all on Michael. I ain't lying to you. And listen, we had a singing group. Me and my brother, a couple of brothers. And then we, we were tight. But at the time, Denny Fox was a DJ. He was hot. And Denny Fox called me on the phone and he told me, he said, hey, look. He said, Motown is interested in you. And I'm so stupid. I was young and dumb and full of rum. I'm telling you, <laughs> drinking that certain Malcolm, talk crazy. <laughs> the dude said, listen, I said, man, let me tell you something. You either take the whole group or you take none. He said, man, listen, they ain't trying to hear the whole group. They trying to hear you. Mm. I'm loyal, <laughs> faithful, 
dependable, mm. reliable, and stupid. <laughs> I should have took the deal, got blew, blew up, and then came back and got him. That's what Nelly did. Mm. They didn't want the group Nelly was with. Nelly blew up, then came back and got his boys from wherever they're from. Mm. That's what I should have did, but I didn't have nobody coaching me. I didn't have nobody to impart wisdom to tell me that, listen, listen, there's more than one way to do this. Okay, they just want you to go. Sign the deal. Get the deal going. And then once you get where you want to get, they can't tell you what to do. Uh, I didn't have that kind of insight. I didn't have nobody to walk me through that. But I could walk somebody else through it. I could keep somebody from breaking their leg in the same spot I broke mine. Uh, making the same mistake I made because I saw it firsthand. Uh, now, if I'd have had a did it in my life, <laughs> life would have been totally different. <laughs> I'm serious. It's just a matter of understanding. Sometimes you got to recognize God will give you a confidant, somebody who's going to be a ride or die. A confidant is somebody going to be with you no matter what. Uh, Whether you go to jail, where you, wherever you go, wherever you fall in hardship, your confidant going to ride or die with you. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to recognize a confidant when you see one, though. See, but a lot of times you'll get a comrade. See, a comrade is for what you for. Oh, he down with the music because he love music. Mm -hmm. But he ain't for you. Mm -hmm. I say a comrade yeah, is for mm -hmm. what you for, but he ain't for you. Mm -hmm. So the first chance he get, to go with somebody who got a greater agenda, he going to bail on you. But see, if you think he's a confidant and he's really a comrade, you're going to be hurt when he leaves. And so now you're distracted. So now your next song is about him leaving. And how low down he was, snake in the grass, you understand? And now, now listen, now the enemy that took you off course. So now when you was entertaining a whole bunch of people over here with what you were saying, now you talk about something altogether different. Mm. And not only did you lose your focus, you lost your following. Mm. The devil is a lie. Mm. Or you can have a constituent. Now a constituent is against what you're against. But it ain't for you either. Mm -hmm. So as soon as he finds somebody with a greater agenda that's against something greater than you, he gonna bail too. Mm. So once you recognize who God has put in your life, then you could take and value the deposit. But I'm saying to you, and I, I was going to talk about Jeremiah, because Jeremiah was one, the Bible said, God says, from your mother's womb, I formed you. And I birthed you for such a time as this. Everybody, listen to me, every 